statements that have been made in public comment about the topic of additional holidays. Some individuals going so far as to question this board's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So tonight, I'm gonna to use the prerogative of the president to set the record straight. The entire conversation started not a year ago, not several years ago. It started on May of 2021 with an email dated May 3rd from Mrs. Qtub to the Board of Education. In her email, she does not ask for additional holidays. What she asks for is the following, and I quote, as you may or may not know, many students and families in Watchung Hills District are celebrating the holiday of Ramadan. It is a month marked by daily fasting, acts of charity, and commitment to do good unto others. It is, in, it is in nine days that Ramadan will conclude with the culmination of Eid holiday. It is a festive occasion for which many of our students at our school and teachers will be absent. It is in the spirit of equity and inclusivity that I and many in the Watchung Hills community request the following for Eid holidays. That the two Eid holidays be placed on all school calendars and that no events, musicals, sports, etc., field trips, tests, quizzes, or homeworks be scheduled the day of the holiday. No quizzes, tests scheduled the day after." Unquote. This was then followed two weeks later by a request to have Eid and Diwali added to the calendar as actual holidays. Now, during several presentations by Mrs. Qtub and others, it was mentioned how these holidays are celebrated by billions of people around the world. And we understand that. And piqued by this assertion, the Education Committee was assigned the role of looking at this issue. And the Education Committee recommended to the board that we should conduct a survey of the school community to determine how many Watchung Hills families observe these holidays. Recognizing that this may be a larger issue, we wanted to conduct a more comprehensive survey so that we understood the various religious holidays that our community members celebrated that were not currently recognized by our calendar. Additionally, we asked the community for feedback on what would be most helpful to them to ensure their students celebrate their holidays. We engaged Rutgers University to assist with the survey development to ensure there was no bias in the questioning and kept it simple and short to improve the chances of participation. Ms. Qtub and her group objected to this idea, which was puzzling since she and her group claimed that the size of the population observing these holidays, recognizing that, that it would only make sense to want to understand how many in our community actually celebrate them. They went further to state that they would boycott the survey, certainly their prerogative. Fortunately, we had an excellent response rate by survey standards that provided us with invaluable information in order to form the strategy for addressing holidays moving forward. Based on that survey feedback, the administration developed the homework-free zones for the religious holidays when school remains open to allow students to celebrate with their families. The board is supportive of this policy because it allows any of our students, regardless of their religious beliefs or cultural backgrounds, to celebrate with their families without fear of missing out on something significant at school. This is very much in keeping with our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion as part of our strategic plan. This is the very thing Mrs. Qtub requested in her first email, quote, in the spirit of equity and inclusivity. We have recently heard from Mrs. Qtub and her group that Fairfax County, Virginia just added these holidays. Fairfax County, Virginia with 180,000 students speaking 200 languages, demographically very different from where we are, and one of the largest employers in Virginia with 25,000 full-time employees. I know a little bit about this because my wife used to be a teacher in Fairfax County, Virginia. Ms. Qtub also talked about Paramus schools. Paramus just adopted this, which makes total sense, and congratulations to them. 
they have 700 families celebrate the holidays in question. And to change their calendar will ultimately have the school year end on June 27th. There are not too many people in our community that would want school and graduation to go nearly to the end of June. Of course, we could start earlier in August as an option, but I'm not sure how the teachers union would react to that suggestion. And you know what many of these communities did to determine what they wanted to do? They surveyed their communities. Now, Watchung Hills is nothing like Fairfax County or Paramus or Edison. All these communities are different. What we have to take into account is in our Watchung Hills community's interest while also balancing the needs of everybody. And just like businesses do not close for every celebrated religious holiday, the same is true for all school districts across this country. That's because during the period schools are open, there are 133 days with religious holidays that allow for pupil absences. 133 days. We cannot be closed for all of them, which is why districts make judgments based on the needs and the religious and cultural makeup of each individual community. Lastly, Watchung Hills is not a self-contained unified school district. We're actually a collection of five school districts. Each has their own calendars, their own priorities. And when it comes to scheduling, we try to be sensitive so that we're not interfering with breaks for the benefit of families, as well as need to address coordinated transportation issues across our communities. We do our very best to have our, our, our calendars aligned for the benefit of all of our families. I and others on this board have asked Mrs. Kutop and her group to reach out to the other districts to get their feedback on the request for extra holidays as well. To date, we have not received any information and it's unclear if there's actually been any conversations with our related districts, which raises the question, why all the attention at Watch on Hills board meetings and no effort to get the other schools in the home communities to be supportive of this effort? If this truly is a community-wide effort, then you need to engage with all of the communities. Now, after we made it clear in January that our homework-free zone policy was in place, a speaker last month stated this. This is a struggle for the right to celebrate my identity without punishment. Celebrate my identity without punishment. Really? Creating a homework-free zone is punishment? Our policy makes someone struggle to celebrate their identity? This is the very policy that the majority of the survey respondents asked for. The very policy that Mrs. Qtub had asked for, quote, in the spirit of equity and inclusivity. We have not heard from others that our policy is punishment. Our policy is acknowledgement of the right to celebrate any individual's cultural or be religious beliefs. This is part of our commitment to embracing diversity, equity, and inclusion for every student. This board has accepted this policy from this administration. The calendar for the 2022-2023 school year has been adopted and the homework free zones have been identified. Now, to be clear, this is not to say that at some point in time in the future, these holidays could never be added. They certainly can be. A future board and administration may find a way to make the calendar work. Collaboration between the districts may uncover a solution that will work for everyone. Maybe schools will begin earlier August and allow the addition of not only Eid and Diwali, but Lunar New Year and Greek Orthodox Easter <coughs> and other holidays that our community celebrates. But that is for another day. For now, this policy is in place. The calendar is set and it is unlikely that this current board will revisit this topic again. Now, lastly, it was stated that equity and diversity and inclusion doesn't matter to this board. I strongly and vociferously object to that statement. 
That is completely not true and is not supported by the facts as demonstrated by the investment that this district makes in addressing those issues. Any further commentary of that, I would strongly suggest you make sure that you are using your, choosing your words wisely when addressing the board based on making accusations on what they do and do not support. That concludes my remarks. I will move to other business.